Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today, let's be honest, starting with laser engraving can be both exciting and a little overwhelming too. Whether you're using a diode, a CO2 laser, or a fiber laser, there's some common mistakes that nearly every beginner makes. But don't worry, in today's video, I'm gonna break down these 10 laser engraving mistakes and how to avoid them and how to fix them if you already made them. All right, let's go ahead and get right into this. All right, first up is focus. Focus is everything in laser engraving. If your laser isn't perfectly focused on your material, you'll get blurry, weak, or inconsistent results. Even if your machine has autofocus, it's a good idea to double check your material and manually check your focus if your machine allows for it, such as using the focus stick that comes with some different kinds of lasers or the gauge that comes with it as well. You wanna make sure that your material sits flat as well for this. A tiny misalignment can mess up your entire job. Next up is using the wrong material. Not all wood, acrylics, or leathers are safe or give a good result. For example, pine wood burns easily and gives an inconsistent engraving, while some woods like Baltic birch, MDF, give cleaner results and a more reliable outcome. And this one's important, never engrave PVC. So such as vinyl records, you've seen me make several videos on this already. They give off toxic gas that are like chlorine gas, and it can do a lot of da damage both to you, your machine, or your lungs. So just don't do that. Um, always research your material before you go ahead and engrave it and make sure that it doesn't put off any kind of toxic chemicals. Mistake number three is overpowering your engravings. So when I say that is adding more power to your engravings is not always the best results. Um, in fact, two too much power can lead to burn marks, loss of detail, or even fire hazards. Uh, start with a lower power and higher speeds and then work your way up. Just gradually test each one and then um, use like scrap materials first of that same type of material. That way you can find the perfect engraved settings for yourself. Speaking of testing, this brings us to mistake number four, and that's skipping test grids or test arrays. So test arrays or test grids are basically where you can get your own custom settings in a tiny grid format that'll test multiple different powers and speeds at the same time. Um, and a lot of this will be preset automatically for you with uh, different software such as the Make It software or Xtool software. Or you may have to manually do this within like Lightburn um, or different laser engravers that don't automatically have these. But I highly recommend that you do this on any kind of test material that you have before you do your final engravings. Mistake five is skipping air assist. So if you have an air assist built into your machine, I would just use this every single time to be completely honest. Um, this is going to ensure that you have clean cuts, minimal burn residue. Um, it's going to push smoke and debris away for you. Um, if you don't have one built in and you have the option to add one on the outside, like some machines have, um, I would definitely add uh, an air assist and use that every single time. Um, there are some occasions where you may not use that if there's going to make a piece of paper blow away or something like that. But anytime that you can use the air assist, make sure you use an air assist. Number six is not ventilating properly. So you always want to ventilate properly because this can cause toxic fumes in your environment if you don't. So um, I prefer to vent out a window so it's going straight outside. Otherwise, you can get filtration systems. Um, or use like an exhaust fan, just anything that you can get that fumes out of your house or your shop. Mistake seven is forgetting to frame or preview. So if your machine has the ability to frame or preview, uh, just take a few seconds to do that. It's definitely worth it. Um, you can either frame in a square shape with most machines, or you can do an outline machine with like a Galvo laser. Uh, I highly recommend you do this so you can ensure that your laser design lands where it needs to be every single time. Number eight is not using the layers in your software. So whether you're using Lightburn, Xtools software, the We Create Make It software, um, using different colors can ensure that your engraves, your scores, and your cuts are all in separate operations. 
Uh, trust me, using colors is a game changer. Um, you don't want to import all of your design with one color and then it just be a mess to try and change those settings. Mistake nine is neglecting your lenses and mirrors. Uh, a dirty lens can reduce your laser's power dramatically and it could even cause your lens to crack. So just make sure you're cleaning your lenses, your mirrors, your fans. Just clean your machine pretty often, um, but just don't over clean it to the point where you might cause something else to break. So anytime that you run several sheets or you have a really long day of engraving, just make sure you clean those parts to make sure your machine lasts as long as possible, especially the laser lens. And finally, mistake number 10 is giving up too soon. Look, we've all been there. You mess up a project, waste material, and you feel like quitting. Every fail teaches you something. And those lessons are what makes you better. Stick with it, keep experimenting, and don't be afraid to ask questions or watch videos like this one to keep learning. So which of these mistakes have you made? Let me know down in the comments below and feel free to share your own tips or fails to help others as well. If you found this helpful, go ahead and just give me a like and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Um, one day, I would love to make 100,000 subscribers. I hope you guys find all of this stuff useful. Other than that, if you have any questions or you want some laser engraving designs, Check out Fresh Start Customs on Etsy. I'll put a link down below and we'll catch you guys in the next one.